Hello and welcome to Sit Down with the Chief. The trial of Norman Seabrook has ended in a mistrial uh, and editor Richard Steyer is going to explain why it was so difficult for the jury to come up with a verdict. Basically, I think that the case foundered because of credibility problems involving the key witness in the case, Jonah Rechnitz, who had engaged in several scams unrelated to uh, the alleged uh, bribe that Seabrook received of $60,000 in return for investing $20 million in union money uh, with a hedge fund that subsequently had to file for bankruptcy. Uh, there was very skillful cross-examination by Seabrook's lawyer, uh, in particular Paul Sheckman, uh, that uh, basically indicated to jurors that just about anything that Rechnitz was telling them was likely to be a lie. and. Uh, that became a real problem, especially because the jurors, during the first four days of six days of deliberations, focused almost entirely on Rechnitz's testimony, which took up 940 pages of trial transcript. It wasn't until the fifth day that they began examining the testimony of Elias Husamadeen, who replaced Seabrook as head of the union. Uh, he painted a picture in which Seabrook had been evasive, uh, not turning over a letter from a union lawyer that raised questions about some of the potential risks of investing in a hedge fund, as well as not telling uh, board members about uh, a $5 million investment he made from Cobra's operating fund until uh, somebody from the bank called the union's treasurer to ask him questions about the check. And uh, this was more compelling, but it wasn't nearly as dramatic as uh, the testimony by Rechnitz, who also spoke about scams in which he had uh, basically given money to uh, Mayor de Blasio's campaign and to two ranking police officers who received various gifts including trips to Israel and Florida and Las Vegas in return for favors and access and I think ultimately the jurors just decided that uh, the case hinged too much on the testimony of Rechnitz and that it was unreliable but there was enough other evidence that uh, didn't allow them to simply acquit uh, Seabrook and Uberfeld. So the federal government says it's going to try the case again, probably late spring or thereabouts, and uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you, Richard Steiner. Thank you for watching. Sit down with the chief.